Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.1.4.4 Configure VLANs, VTP, and DTP. This lab assignment is a part of the Cisco Routing and Switching Scaling Networks Version 6 curriculum. Now in this lab, you probably have already by this point had some VLAN experience and other uh, Cisco routing and switching curriculums like in the routing and switching essentials curriculum. Um, so you've already had some VLAN experience, but let's just say we had 10 VLANs to create on each one of these switches. Switch 1, switch 2, and switch 3. Well, if we wanted to create those two, 10 VLANs and use them, we would have to go to each switch individually to create them. Well, there is a more efficient and better method. Just like when we have the sharing of our networks with dynamic routing protocols, we have a, a dynamic protocol that will allow us to share VLAN information. Um, and we're going to set that up here. So remember in past, we have to make sure that our ports here that are between each switch are set in trunk mode because we need them to carry multiple VLANs because each one of these PCs are in different VLANs. So if PC0 is in VLAN 10 and it needs to get to PC5, it needs to travel the same way as PC1 connected to PC4 or whichever ones are talking, right? Um, so we also need to make sure these are in access mode and only carry in one VLAN between the PC and the switch. So we're going to do all of that as we configure this lab. So first we need to show our VLANs. If you don't remember how to do that, it's show VLAN brief. And you may need to make your box a little bigger to be able to show that, your window, um, to be able to show kind of all the ports that are in VLAN 1. They're always in, by default, VLAN 1. We've got VLAN 99 and 999 here created. And these 1002, 3, 4, and 5 for FIDI, token ring, they're always there uh, no matter what. Okay, so we see that there. And that is the actual the same if you go to S2. See the same thing. As well as if you do a show VLAN brief on S3. Same thing again. Okay. So we want to first make sure our ports are in trunking mode. So on S1, S2, and S3 right now, it says in the directions that all of them are set to dynamic uh, auto. Yeah, dynamic auto. What that does, and there's a chart in chapter two that shows you kind of there's a like if both modes are not in just straight out trunk mode, if one's like in dynamic desirable and the other one's in dynamic auto, then it will automatically um, negotiate what mode is it going to go into because sometimes the other end might be in access mode um, and that will react differently with the, the dynamic auto and the dynamic desirable mode. So right now, this end G01 on S2 is in dynamic auto. We're going to change, I'm going to configuration mode, interface G01 that is attached to S2's G01. We're going to change it to switch port mode dynamic desirable. Okay, and you see it change it to up. We're also, while we're there, well, we'll get to that a little bit later, actually, set in the native VLAN. Um, so, We'll also go over to S1 and do interface, make that this one, interface G02. This is the one that's connected to switch 3. We're going to do switch port mode trunk. So we're just going to outright put it in trunking mode. No negotiating or anything like that. So G01, switch port mode desirable dynamic desirable, and I just hit the tab key here for it to finish it out for me, and then in uh, interface G02, switch port mode trunk outright. So now we're going to go over to switch 03 on the other end of that line and put it in G02. We're going to put it in switch port mode trunk. 
So I'm just going to outright put it in shrunking mode on the end of S3. Now, this is important to note. In this lab, you can only get 91%. That basically means you have done everything, cor everything correctly. This lab does not correctly grade the switch port mode between S1 and S2, even though you have technically done it correct at this point if you follow the directions. Okay. Now, one thing to show you is while we're here, do show interfaces trunk. It'll show you what interfaces are successfully in trunk mode and what VLANs can be carried on them. So that's also important to note that when we put it in desirable mode, it actually did negotiate trunking mode with the other end of uh, S2. So you can do that on each switch as well and kind of see which ones are in trunking mode. Now, one other thing we need to do is make sure we set the native VLAN which is we're going to use 999 for each port as well. Now, because we're going to do this the same on ports G01 and 2, I can use what I just typed there, the interface range command, G01-2. That means we configure both of them at the same time. Now, the only caveat to this is you have to make sure you are using the identical commands there. If you were to use different commands on each one, that's not going to work. Okay. So we see that error message pop up there. So we're going to go to switch to interface G01. Got to be in configuration mode first. And we're going to put it in switch port. Trunk native VLAN 999. Just like we did with the other end. Okay. So here we did switch port trunk native VLAN 999 for both. Now we did it for that one. And now we're going to do it here under G02, switch port trunk native VLAN 999. And you see it say consistency restored. Now again, because this is not grading correctly, unfortunately that consistency will never be restored or what Packet Tracer thinks it won't be, so it's just going to scream at you there with an error message, so don't freak out with that. Okay? So this message right here about the mismatch consistency between G01 on S1 and G01 on S2, we just can't fix that. It's just an error with the lab. Now, as I said before, we used to have to create all our VLANs on every single switch. Now we can create them on one and let it tell our other switches what to do. There's three modes. You've got client mode, which receives updates from a server mode switch, but the client, you cannot create local VLANs to use. It only receives the VLANs it can use from the server. You've got the server mode, which is kind of like the boss of the network. If you have more than one server mode switch, then it will use the one with the highest update revision number because it thinks that it has received the most updates and therefore is most up to date. So you have to be careful if you ever put a server mode switch into an existing network and add it, you have to be careful because it can overwrite all the other VLANs if everybody thinks that it is the most up to date and you've got old configurations on it. So you have to be careful there. The last mode is transparent mode. Transparent mode will only pass on the updates to other switches in the network if it was connected to another one, but it will not take on the um, VLANs that are distributed through the VTP um, protocol. It will not take them on for itself because that's the transparency of it. But you can create local VLANs for it to operate um, on a transparent mode switch. If you try to create a VLAN after you've put a switch in client mode, it'll actually tell you you cannot do so. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do on S1 is um, do uh, VTP mode server. Now all of them are in transparent mode right now. So we're going to do VTP mode server. And then you have to set a domain, which is case sensitive, as well as a password, which is also case sensitive for all the switches to join it. Okay, so we want to set the VTP domain to CCNA, that's the name of it, and the password to Cisco. 
Now, again, all of your switches have to have that. So if we do a show VTP status, we can see, or sorry, do show VTP status. We can actually see what settings we have there if you are ever in a troubleshooting lab. You can also do show VTP password to show that separately, because that won't show here. Oh, sorry, forgot the do. You can exit back out if you don't want to type do, but you see it's set to Cisco there, okay? Now, we're going to configure um, S2 and S3 to do the same thing. So we'll do, exit back out one, VTP mode client for S2, VTP <coughs> domain CCNA, VTP password Cisco. Now, I'm just going to show you, if I tried to create a VLAN here, you see not allowed in client mode, okay? Then I'm going to go to S3, and it wants you to not change the mode yet. It's going to have you change it later. So we'll do VTP mode, I'm oh, sorry, VTP um, domain CCNA, VTP client, or sorry, VTP password, I want to put this thing in client mode so bad, but we are going to in a minute, Cisco. Now, this will allow it to participate in the updates, like it will receive it, but it will not take it on as S3 when it's still in transparent mode. So S1 is kind of the boss here. So we're going to create all our VLANs there. So I'm going to do VLAN 10, name red, VLAN 20, name blue, VLAN 30, name yellow. Let me exit back out. And again, that's still going to give you that mismatch. That's to S2. Alright, now if we do a show VTP status one more time, do show VTP status. Okay, we see our revision number there is 6. We're still in server mode. Alright, if we do a show VLAN brief. We see we've got our new VLANs 10, 20, 30 there. Let's look at S2 about what it did. Status mode, we got it in client. It's also on revision 6. So let's do a show VLAN brief. Boom, we got 10, 20, 30. And we did not create anything locally on S2, but it knows about them. Okay. Let's check S3. It should not know about them. And it does not. See, even though it is, you know, it has the ability to join the domain with the password, it's not participating because it's in transparent mode. It's not taking on those VLANs for itself. Not yet. Okay. Now, um, we see that. Now we're going to change it to client mode. So now, VTP mode client. Give it a couple seconds. I'm going to fast forward time here, just so it'll update. And now let's rerun that command, do show VLAN brief. Now you see we get 10, 20, 30. All right. Now, <clears throat> we have to configure the access modes to be able to carry the correct VLANs here to the correct PCs. So on S2 here, we're going to configure a range of ports to all be in the same VLAN. So we've got interface range FA01 through 8 and they've got it switch port mode access switch port access VLAN 10. Okay, Interface range FA09 through 16 and I'm just going off the chart there. Um, we need switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Okay, interface range FA 17 through 24, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 30. Okay, so that configures each one of these end devices over here to be in the right VLAN. It could only carry one. Now we're going to do the same thing for S3. Interface range FA01 through 7, or sorry, 8. 
switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. Interface range F809 through 16. Switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Interface range F8017 through 24. Switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 30. Okay. So we got all of our VLANs there. We've got all of our VLAN assignments correctly to the end devices. And you can also do a show VLAN brief. And it will show you now, if you make the screen wide enough, it's easier to see which ones are in, which ports are in which um, VLAN here, respectively. Same thing for S2. Do show VLAN brief. All right, we see same thing here. Okay, how it's divided up. 1 through 8 is in 10, port 9 through 16 is in VLAN 20, port 17 through 24 is in VLAN 30. So awesome. Okay, now it says we should be able to ping from PC0 to PC5. We get successful because they're in the same VLAN. PC1 to PC4, successful, they're in the same VLAN. PC2 to PC3. Successful, they're in the same VLAN. So everything is working correctly. All our VLANs are being shared. It makes it a lot easier um, so that we can just, if we add for future reference and scalability, because we're scaling networks, right? We want to make them larger. Um, for things to be able to really grow and more VLANs to be used, I can just pop them in on S1. They will propagate out to S2 and S3. And then we can go from there. So again, the only thing you want to be careful of is if you ever add a server mode switch in here that's got a high revision number, it will take on those characteristics if you are not careful. So you always want to be cautious of that. But other than that, this completes this lab. Remember, there is a mismatch here between these two ports. If you check your check results, it'll tell you the status is wrong. There's nothing you can do there. It is in the correct status. Um, it just ends at 91%. So just make sure you contact your instructor um, to make sure that's okay. And if you're in Mr. Lucas's class, that's all right. So that concludes this particular lab.